Hey everyone, for those who don't know me, my name is Kelly and I am a physical therapist and I specialize in oncology and lymphedema. Today, I'm gonna to go through the different paddings and foams that I use for my patients with lymphedema for their compression bandaging routines. I'm gonna start with the least restrictive or least compressive all the way up to the more intensive compression and I'll try to go through and explain why I use each one or what situation I use each type with. If you feel like this video or any of my others are helpful, please let me know. You can push the like button or send a comment down below if you have any other topics or things that you would like to see covered. Okay, so let's get started. So the first foam I use is very basic. It is um, Artiflex, or you might also see different types of brands. It is a cotton patty. It's very thin, very soft. So for those who have more itching, sometimes it's nicer up against the skin. I'll only use this when there is really mild swelling or someone who doesn't tolerate the thicker compression. The downside of this type is that it's usually not enough padding to avoid a tourniquet if the bandages do roll down. So what you can also use this for is a liner, but you can also use this folded into multiple layers and then use that piece, rip it off, and use it against creases that may give you more of an uncomfortable area with that tourniquet or extra bandaging. So the front of the ankle, behind the knee, or inside of the elbow. This padding probably won't be enough for someone who has more moderate or severe lymphedema, but again, it can be used more as a comfort liner. So the next foam I may use is a Rosadol Soft or a Compra Foam, depending on the brand that you use. It comes in more of a little bit of a thicker white foam, which will give you a little bit more support than the Artifex will, but it's also not too bulky. So I'll use this for someone still has mild lymphedema or maybe a little bit of moderate if they need more of a tune-up, um, but you can spiral it up the limb, the leg, or the arm, and it will give more of a contour than the Artiflex will. For many, it may not be the best compression or the most supportive, but it is a really good place to start for someone who has more mild lymphedema. So the next foamer padding is the gray foam. This is a pretty popular foam as most CLTs or certified lymphedema therapists are taught to use this foam in their training. So you'll see this pretty often. It comes in various widths, so thinner to thicker. The more, the, or excuse me, the thicker it is, the more compression that there will be. And it also will be a little bit more comfortable versus the thin. Now the downside of this is that it is bulkier, especially than the last couple of foams that we talked about, but it is gonna give you more support. So if you have more moderate to severe lymphedema, the gray foam is a great place to start. Now you have to go back to arts and crafts time at school, because you are gonna have to cut and shape the gray foam. They do come pre-cut on certain websites, but generally everyone's not the same size, so you are gonna have to trim them down to fit you. It's gonna be more supportive than the white foams that we just talked about. It's better if you have thinner skin or you are more vulnerable to any skin breakdown. This is gonna be more padding, so you are less likely to get any tourniquets or tourniquet areas or painful areas on your skin um, compared to the white foam. The downside of this is that it's sometimes difficult to get into place and stay in place as you're bandaging. So you're gonna have to find good techniques to keep this well wrapped so it doesn't shift on you as you're trying to do your bandages. So the next foam is the white spaghetti foam as they call it. As you can see, it has the ridges through the foam. I like this foam a lot for someone who has more mild fibrosis starting with their lymphedema, so that thickened tissue or that thickened skin. The ridges or the indentations that this foam will cause will help soften those up or soften the fibrosis up. That will then allow the lymphatic fluid to move more freely through that thicker, dense area. It is soft, so it is still comfortable to use. You can wrap 
the whole arm or the whole leg in this, or what most people will do is similar to the gray foam is to shape it. So you can cut out a large piece. Um, more frequently, I tend to use it for like the top of the foot that can be a little bit more stubborn or around the ankle. The downside is you have to be careful how you cut it because it can fray or break apart. So when you cut in the middle of one of the thicker areas, the foam will just fall right out. So you need to make sure that you're cutting on the middle of the ridge and so that you don't lose your piece or it gets it smaller. You can tape the edges as well um, to hold it more in place. This foam probably doesn't last as long, meaning it, it breaks down and softens and breaks apart a little bit quicker than something like the gray foam does. Um, but again, overall, it is more for someone who has mild fibrosis starting, who doesn't want to go to the intense ones that we'll go through next. Okay, so the next foam or pad that we use is Comprex, or also known as just the orange foam. It is a much thicker, more dense foam, which makes it more intense. We use it for moderate to severe fibrosis because it will help soften the skin, but you will likely still have to shape this to an area that is more stubborn, like the top of the foot or around the ankle bones or around the elbow area or the hand. So you do have to be a little bit more careful with this foam to watch your skin, but it does a really good job of compressing. The other option that Comprex comes in are these pre-made rubber pads. They are shaped kind of like kidney beans. They are used to fit in different areas, but we often use them around the ankle bones. So the outside of the ankle bones, a lot of people have that stubborn swelling in those areas. It's because if you have a flat surface against that, and there's an area that's more of a crevice, it has a really hard time getting really good pressure in around that bone. So these are nice because they fit around that bone. You can press over that with the rest of your bandages and wraps. And it does a nice job of trying to dig into that crevice to help break down some of that fibrosis and reduce some of your swelling. So the next pad or foam that I use is lymph pads. Now I'm sorry I don't have a sample of that with me, I think I used them all, but basically I'll put a link down below of what it looks like, but it, it's a thicker foam, more dense foam that has ridges or different types of patterns on it. It comes in a sheet and you need to again cut out a shape that you like for that stubborn area. Or you can just use the pad overall and just cover the arm or the leg with that pad. It is more intense again, so I wouldn't use this for thin skin or someone who has any openings. And I also don't typically use it every single day. I'll use it for someone who has really severe or moderate to severe fibrosis or thickening of skin or tissue and use that to soften it. And once the tissue softens, then I'll go back to another, you know, less compressive um, foam to be more comfortable and just for skin safety. So the next thing that I'm gonna show you is a chip bag. So many people have had one made by their CLT, but basically what it is, it's a lot of pieces of foam inside some sort of fabric or liner or sock that you put together, shaped in various sizes, various forms, that you can put against your skin or a stubborn swollen area and wrap over the top of. The thicker part is gonna give you more compression to help shrink you quicker, but the little chips are also meant to help break up some of that fibrotic tissue. I do feel like this is more tolerated compared to a complex or one of those thicker, denser foams because it is a little bit softer um, and you can make it yourself at home. So what we'll typically use is I'll keep all my scraps of my foam and keep them in a bag or a box and then I'll cut them up into little squares and then I'll use some sort of liner and shape it whatever size I want for someone or whatever shape. Use a, spe a special type of tape on the end. You can sew up the ends, use whatever you want, and that will give you any shape like that. You can also buy these online in different sizes, and the common ones are Swell Spots or Jovi packs that are already made, well sewn, more durable. You can wash them; they'll last longer. Um, but again, you can you can get a lot of different sizes or shapes online. So that is another option if you have tried a chip bag but you want something that's going to last you a longer time because you feel like you need it more often. 
I am gonna go through in another video how I create my chip bag from scratch. I'll go step by step and what I use and how I do it. So if that's something that you're interested in seeing, feel free to subscribe below and then you'll be alerted when that comes up. So one of the last things or last options for padding or foams that I'm gonna show you is another option that you can use. If you've used the foam, you've used the chip bag, and you want something more durable that's gonna last a long time, it might be worth looking into purchasing a compression pad or for our compression liner underneath. This is a Solaris Caricia and it is an arm one. So it is that chip bag. It's kind of like a nighttime garment, but it is meant to be more of a liner so that you put this on and then you wrap over the top of it. It's gonna do a really nice job long time, or long term to help break up the fibrosis, help shrink you, and it's comfortable, easy, doesn't take as much time up as using all the foams do. It is more expensive, but again, if it's something that just is easy long term or your insurance pays for it or you're supported by that, um, that is a, a nice option to try. I've also seen some people use their Job's Relax, which is supposed to be a light compression garment, but sometimes it's not enough compression, so they'll just take a bandage and wrap over the top. Again, it's gonna give you a little bit of pattern, a little bit of texture to it to help soften some of that skin or some of that tissue, and it's pretty thin. Um, they are a little bit warmer, um, but overall they are a lot easier to use long-term that they do a really nice job underneath your bandages. Now there are a lot of other types of padding and foams that you can use for your lymphedema. Those are just the types that I use most commonly with my patients. If there's something else that you love or that you really think works well, feel free to comment that below so you can share with others. Again, if you have any other topics that you would like to see covered or you enjoyed this, please feel free to comment that below. Happy wrapping everyone.